Hey guys! Welcome back to the Craftcore channel. I wanted to show you the most recent sewing machine that I have in my collection. I picked this up randomly on a buy and sell group that was local and it included the cabinet, the sewing machine that's inside, and the chair that I'm sitting on, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, I haven't actually tried it yet, so we're going to try it together and see if we can get it to work and what needs to be done. Um, the only thing I have done so far is when I first got it, I peeked inside and there was some really nasty mold that was on the inside edges. It was pretty gross. Um, I gave, the, gave it a wipe down and that no longer is around. So let's get started. Plug it in. This sewing machine features a drop-in bobbin and interchangeable fashion discs. First, I'll demonstrate some key mechanics, and then I'll do an unboxing of all the goodies that came with this find. Let's start by winding a bobbin. Make sure that you're using a compatible one. Loosen the stop motion screw by turning it towards you with your right hand while holding the hand wheel in place with your left. You'll know you're good to go when you move your hand wheel and the needle bar does not go up and down anymore. Move the bobbin winder into the lower position. Put a spool of thread onto the lower spool pin, then guide the thread between the tension discs and up towards the winder. I find it easier to thread the bobbin in the air rather than attached to the winder, so guide the thread through the middle of the bobbin towards a hole on the left side like this. Then, while holding the thread in place, place the bobbin onto the winder. Make sure you're holding the end of the thread when you start, then engage the machine with the foot pedal. The thread will either automatically break off after a few coils have been wound, or you can snip it off. Continue until the bobbin is full or until however much thread you need is wound. You can see as I'm filming this demonstration that if I press the pedal too fast, the thread whips around and pops off. This can cause tension problems. I think this may be because I'm using a crosswound thread, which doesn't feed off the spool pin as smoothly as a stack thread would. I had to go slower and hold my spool of thread gently in place. I recommend going slowly. Once the bobbin is wound, lift the bobbin winder back into the upper position and remove the bobbin. You'll also need to re-tighten the stop motion screw by turning it away from you with your right hand. To access the bobbin area, open the slide plate and lift out the bobbin. Hold the bobbin so the thread leads off counterclockwise. Place the bobbin into the case, then guide the thread into the slot and under the spring. Draw the thread into the notch and pull the thread across. Leave at least a 3 inch tail and close the slide plate like so. There's nothing tricky about threading this sewing machine compared to other Singer sewing machines. Start by placing a spool of thread on one of the upper spool pins. Bring the thread across to the metal guide, then down between the tension discs. Bring the thread past the spring, then behind the metal guide. Guide the thread up through the hole in the take-up lever, then down into the metal loop at the side of the machine. Guide the thread into the little slit in the needle bar. Now all that's left is to thread the needle from front to back. Let's take a closer look at all those steps.
If the stitch width is greater than zero, it will use the stitch pattern set by the fashion disc. I first tried a fashion disc with whatever disc was left in the machine, at a width of four and a length of just finer than 20 stitches per inch. Ta-da! To change to a different fashion disc, lift up the cover. Make sure that your stitch width is set to zero. Move the little screw at the side to the right, then remove the big silver thumb screw by turning it counterclockwise. Remove the fashion disc, then replace it with a new one, lining up the groove and making sure that the design faces up. Put the thumb screw back in place and turn it clockwise until secure. Move the little screw back towards the left, close the cover, then change your stitch width to your desired width. You're ready to sew with style. Something that I always find interesting when picking up vintage used sewing machines is going through the collection and notions that come with it. Along with the usual sewing supplies, you'll sometimes find little treasures that hint at what the person who previously owned them was all about. I love when I find a machine with its original box of attachments and its original manual. Thankfully, the fashion discs that allow you to change the stitch style were still included. Here are all the goodies I found. I think the previous owner may have collected thimbles. The chair itself acts like a sewing box. When I took off the seat, there were all kinds of things to discover. and go together. Whatever that is, it's gross. Thanks so much for watching this video, I hope that you found it helpful. I would appreciate it if you would give this video a like, and feel free to subscribe to my channel for more videos about sewing machines and other crafty goodness. This is Craft Core signing off, thanks for watching.